Hello everyone, uh, this is my V3R. I call it the V3R because it is the same geometry as the version three that a lot of people liked, um, except I've remastered it and revisited it. The ones that I'm doing are gonna have a DK and it has this little logo on the back right there. Um, the main thing that makes this a remastered version is one of the tricks that I learned from the V5s and V6s was putting this this little timing mark on the cam to um, to set your impact. The impact screw is this little screw right here, okay? And this is one of the most important parts of tuning this machine that is often overlooked and misunderstood. And in most cases, the bar is gonna be pretty much when you push it down, it's gonna be parallel to the frame. You can see right here that, um, this impact screw is set perfect, and it's just equal across there. There's, it's parallel to the frame. Um, but most important than that is making sure that this line here is within this little notch on the frame. So see that little notch on the frame right there? And this line, there's another line on the cam as well, like down below past the bearing, and that, so you can see that it's, it's matched up in there. You roll it over, Gently touch the spring and make sure that it's in that zone. From there, I have a clicking dial and you can't go too far or too little on this dial. It's numbered one through nine. And so right here, the 10th spot is a star. And that star is pretty much it. That's the middle of the stroke setting. So one is gonna be the shortest, which is right here. The star is gonna be the middle stroke. And you have number nine, which is the longest. Um, most of them, the star setting is gonna be the ideal setting. Some of them, the ideal setting might be on a number three or a number six or seven. But um, just with the middle stroke setting, um, it's very versatile. I can use a tight five all the way to a 14 round. Um, typically the, the, the number nine setting would be more for really low volts where you want to do like stipple whip shading and stuff like that. And you just need a little bit more, um, punch at a lower volt just to, for the mechanism to keep up. Um, for the impact screw, like always, there's a side locking screw. It's always pretty snug, but if it keeps coming undone and you keep having to reset your impact screw, it might be because that screw is loose. The, I have a new vice lock system on here, and I've learned recently that I didn't reinvent the wheel on this, except what's cool with this one is um, you can remove your thumb screw if you're traveling. and it won't come out. I do have a way to come out, but uh, I just don't wanna talk about this in the video. Um, it should never be a problem and something that you should have to take out. I just have to have a little bit of secret wizardry going on. <laughs> um, but it's also spring-loaded. Uh, what's nice with this is with your disposables, you'll turn it in just slightly and then you'll feel it stop. And when it stops, that's as far as it's gonna go and it will lock your tube. You just don't wanna start grinding your tube and trying to make it slip, but it, your tube's not gonna go anywhere. Um, very, very easy with a normal tube. Like I just tighten it and it's like little tug past from where it's touching and it's, it's, it's very solid in there. It's not going anywhere. All right. Most important thing to get your machine to not spit is the way you'd bend your needle. And as you can see, I have a gentle arc throughout the needle, and then I like to put a little bit more of a bend right at the top. So the reason I do that bend right there, as you can see, when the armature bar is up, the loop is more perpendicular to the armature bar or slightly more perpendicular. The idea is, is that you bend your needle so that in the natural resting position, your needle wants to be against the tube tip. And if it's not, then what happens is the reason these machines will spit sometimes is it retracts so fast that it wants to whip the needle up. 
So bending your needle like this is gonna help prevent that. Also a good uh, firm nipple is uh, recommended. Um, and it's still best to, if you're gonna be doing long sessions with a lot of high, higher speeds and bigger needles, you're gonna wanna change your nipple out with each machine, with each uh, tattoo you do. Um, you may hear in the middle of a tattoo, if you continue to use it for hours on end, at high volts and a long stroke, all of a sudden the pitch changes and it starts spitting like crazy. It could be that you sawed through your nipple. Um, all right, as far as rubber bands go, people always ask me where I get my rubber bands at. And um, I'm gonna recommend that you can just use two normal number 12 rubber bands. I do like a number 28, but they're very hard to find. You got to almost like call into rubber band companies. There's a postalband.com and they don't even have them on their website. I just call them and, um, and then he sends me some. Um, but two number 12s work just fine too. So what I do, put them over and then spin them around there. And the nice thing too with doing this figure eight style deal is if you need more tension, you can just tug on the rubber band. Uh, my friend Fabio taught me that little trick. Um, so you don't have to be reliant on having the perfect tension of your rubber band. If it's too tight, you can always just kind of release it and do that. But um, basically when I bend the needle, what I'm trying to do is get enough tension so that the tension of the needle makes the needle bar go straight rather than the bend. So if your needle bar was straight to begin with and you put tension on it, it's gonna bend your needle bar and it's gonna make your, your needle not lick the tube, the, the tip of your tube. All right, let's see her run. I always like to run positive up because I want the machine to hit sharper. Um, positive down will be a little bit more passive. Um, I just never run it that way. One of the things is compared to the V6s um, and V5s that had a, a different motor in it, this motor has a little bit wider of a range where um, I say like from five volts to seven volts is a, is a good range. You can turn it, you can run it all the way down um, in the four and three and a half volt range if you want with a longer stroke. You may have to set your impact screw a little bit more just so that it will actually punch at the bottom of the stroke. Um, but I typically, like for nine liners and, and, um, and up, I like to be over six volts, like a 6.3. And I kind of like this speed for my bigger needles, maybe 6.5. Very rarely do I want to go more than that, just because I find that um, uh, you start getting too fast and you get just you just get more blood, more trauma than you do get ink in the skin. And here I am at five volts. So one good way to tell if you need your impact screw reset is when you turn it down in the five volt range, you should still hear it sound good. It should still have that crisp sound. And um, in some cases, like with this one, on the number one setting at five volts, it still has an impact. If you don't, if you know you need your impact settled in, when all of a sudden your machine just doesn't have the punch it used to, and maybe your bar isn't parallel anymore, and it starts doing this thing where it wants to slip. And it never does it on the video for me. You can kind of hear it. It's like stuttering. That's because it's slipping when it's hitting at the bottom of the stroke and you just have to have a little bit more interaction with the cam. So I'm just gonna turn that. So again, I'm in that range. On lower volts, you're gonna be on the higher end of in that notch with this line. Um, And if you start going to like a, a longer stroke, it can start getting a little too choppy and then you want, see like that's on number nine. That's really good at four volts. But if you get it to five volts, 
and it's, it's, you're kind of shredding people up. But then, in your nine volts, I mean, you're really gonna be, you can see how much that stroke is actually traveling. Um, and that's like if you wanted to tattoo some rhinoceroses, I guess, or be a part of the Brutal Black Project, maybe, uh, you might wanna do that and just change your nipple out every 10 minutes, because that's what will happen. Um, okay, I think I covered it. Keep sterilants away from all the bearings and electrical connections. Most sterilants are corrosive. You can use barbicide, which is a non-corrosive sterilant, if you feel like you need to wipe everything down and get cooties off your machine. I just prefer people just treat their machines with respect and don't cross-contaminate them and just treat it as if something you don't want to touch your client with and um, cross-contaminate. Um, because you will ruin your machine eventually if you keep putting sterilants and rubbing alcohol and all the stuff over all these things. If you get alcohol down in this return spring, it's going to corrode that return spring. Um, so yeah, be careful. Use common sense. Thanks for watching.